Good morning once again, my friends and family, for the Live, Build, Change Morning Mindset. I'm glad that you are here. Yesterday, we began to talk about the issue of expectations that we have of God. And I should say here at the outset of this episode that I do believe we should expect great things of God. But being creatures who serve the Almighty Creator, there is a proper humility that has to go into our practice of expecting those kinds of things of God because He is the sovereign creator. We talked about that in some of the previous episodes. God has both the right and the responsibility to do whatever he knows is best in a circumstance. And it may not always pan out the way that we think is best. And that's sometimes where we get into trouble because we're defining best according to what we are able to see and according to what we feel about a circumstance or a situation. When the fact is, We don't know all the facts. We don't know the full story of many of the things that we encounter in life. And we make premature conclusions as to what the best outcome should be. And I suspect that Moses felt that way in Exodus chapter 5 because he had obeyed God who had promised he would deliver his people and that he would use Moses to do that. And he went to Pharaoh and he told Pharaoh, as God had instructed him, let my people go. God had told him Pharaoh's not going to listen because God was going to harden his heart in order to show his glory and his might to the nations and to the people of Israel. But I'm sure Moses didn't expect what happened. Pharaoh actually turned on the people of Israel and he made their labor harder and the people came complaining to Moses. And so Moses was disillusioned because what happened was not what he expected. Now, I don't think that he expected the people would be delivered that first time that he went to Moses to Pharaoh because God had told him Pharaoh would not listen. But there's no indication that he had any reason to expect Pharaoh would then make it harder on the people and that the people would turn on Moses. And so Moses cries out to the Lord, And we talked about this yesterday. And he says, oh, Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? Since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he's done evil to this people. And you have not delivered your people at all. You see, Moses had an expectation that his obedience would bring about a certain result. Now, God had already told him that the result, at least initially, would not be deliverance. But Moses expected it would be better than what it was happening here, and that was harm coming to the people. And God responds to Moses in chapter 6 of the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will send them out. And with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, which is the word Yahweh, his his actual name, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as sojourners. And I've heard the groaning of the people of Israel whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. And I will deliver you from slavery to them and I will redeem you with outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. Now you see, there's a lot more God says here, but the point I want to drive home right here is that God promises deliverance, but he's promising it on his timetable. God's promises happen according to his schedule, not ours. And it's our role as his creatures to submit to that. To humbly say, God, your will, not mine, just like Jesus did. Let's dig into this a little more tomorrow and live this day knowing your God is for you and he will keep his promises in your life.